to the point. And this is on boosting your metabolism. And, uh, you know, as a byproduct, shedding some pounds and fat. Unless y'all don't want to do that. I mean, would not anyone be mad at me if, if, if that happened? Uh, I'm just messing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and really, like, protein essentials for not just women. I We have mostly women in our uh, APF fam. But this applies to men, Micah, as well. Um, so that's the topic. Feel free to post in the chat, come off mic, interrupt me. Um, I'm going to ask y'all questions. This is going to be great review for some, and I added in some new stuff. I've been taking a look. I'm always looking at the research and seeing what's working best out there on a weekly basis. So this will be good review, mm -hmm. some new stuff for people, and uh, repetition is king. So we all know that like with our with our facility, we focus on strength training for fitness, daily steps, right? And like maybe structured cardio. Those are the fitness habits, the core fitness habits. The core nutrition habits are like, we gotta do a weekly shopping, right? Cause we gotta prepare ahead of time. Um, meal prep. And when I say meal prep, I mean, we're, we're, we're meal prepping uh, meals during the week that are harder for us to get to. Maybe we are too tired when we get on work and we end up getting fast food or not eating, or we're at work and the uh, friends or the coworkers want to, you know, go out to get fast food, but like, you're like, crap, I don't have my food here either. Let me go with them. You know what I mean? So like, that's why those are like our core habits to start with. And then we have everyone track their protein. Um, and now water intake as just like the core habits of the facility, like get those down and you will most likely be pretty successful if you do that consistently. Any questions on that? Come off mic, post in the chat. Today's topic is we, we, we do beat this to, to the pulp. I, I feel bad for the protein. It's, it's like, it's like a dead horse is getting constantly beaten, but it's worth it. Um, because there is some new stuff that I want to cover. So. We're going to go over like, again, like why is, why is protein essential? And before I go into that, come off mic, someone post in the chat. There's no right or wrong answer and no judgment. Why, why focus on protein? Helps build your muscles. Helps build our muscles. And then what does that do? What does that actually mean for us? Uh, it helps in recovery. It helps with recovery. Yeah, absolutely. So that you can not feel like you're dying or in a wheelchair. And also so you can hit your next workout harder. Right. <clears throat> what it else? also stays, it fills your appetite, satiates you. Yeah. So you don't crave other fruit foods. You don't crave. Uh -huh. Yeah. Keeps us fuller longer. Exactly. Um, it actually helps with cravings. A lot of the times there's a deficiency of protein in the body. Um, and it stabilizes our blood sugar too, so that we don't have those crashes as much. Mm hmm Very good. Anything else? Now, who who likes the slides? I I took like an hour trying to figure out how to do these colors and stuff. Can can I get some props over here, or is it <laughs> or is it pretty bad? <laughs> very good, very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I wanna I wanna level up my game with y'all. Oh, someone posted in the chat. Let's see. Good morning, love the slide. Oh, thank you, Deidre. You're just trying to earn brownie points, but I I I still love. It. Okay. Oh, still know how to use it. Let me move everyone up here so we can see the screen. Okay, so why why would we eat protein? Y'all just said it. So I'm gonna go over what y'all said already. Everyone said um, feel fuller longer, helps build muscle, great for recovery. Uh huh. Uh, along with building muscle, uh, we have tissue in the body, muscle tissue and fat tissue. What burns more calories per hour without looking at the slides? Muscle. Muscle tissue. Yep. Very good, Sylvia. You you earn a gold star for that one. Uh, <laughs> I've been here longer than anybody, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have. Yeah, we're getting sick of you at this point. No, it's good. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, correct. Um, now, here's here's something really cool that I actually didn't even know. Um, I knew that there's something called the thermic effect of food. We knew this. We knew that when we consume protein, um, 20 to 30 percent of the calories get burned in the digestive process. Meaning, Micah, if you have a hundred calorie protein shake. Um, you're going to get all the protein in the 25 grams or whatever it is, but you're going to actually not get 20 to 30 of those calories. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Now, right? Here's what I didn't know. 
It's like, have y'all heard like the, I think it was Orange 3 Fitness, Fit, Fit Body Bootcamp, some, some type of group exercise facility. They coined the like post-workout calorie burn. Is anyone familiar with that? There was a, there was a group exercise facility. That's how they did their marketing. Hey, you do this 45 minute fat burning blast, blah, 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 all these marketing terms. And then you're going to be burning more calories per hour at, at, after your workouts than any other gym. <laughs> it is a gimmick. Um, this is actually true though with protein. So let me, uh, so what the research says is that when you eat protein after the meal, it turns on your metabolism. It cranks it up a little bit because of heat. Fat burners, for example, fat burners work because they're, they're thermogenic, meaning they just increase the heat, the temperature in the body, right? So protein does the same thing too. So not only are you getting 20 to 30% less calories from protein and, and you're feeling fuller and all those other benefits, you're actually burning more after you eat. Is that so, the same as saying, I'm sorry, is that the same as saying something's harder to digest? Because, you know, they say eating protein late at night is harder to digest, but it actually builds up more heat in your body, right? So uh -huh. I don't know if that's the same. Yeah, um, I, eating protein at night harder to digest, I, I don't know. I've never, I haven't heard that personally. I'm not sure if that's true or false. Um, okay. I will say this, though. It, um, it can mess up our sleep because temperature is a huge um Temperature regulation uh, is big for sleep, so it you might not. Yeah, exactly. That might be playing a role. So I wouldn't recommend eating a lot of protein before bed. I, I always am okay. a huge fan of two hours before bed. Let's stop eating entirely, almost for the most part. But yeah, that could okay. be part of it, Sylvia. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now here's the cool part. Respectively, with carbs and fats, pretty much nothing. Carbs has a five to fifteen percent. I've seen three to 5%. I just put in there because I didn't want to have anyone go check the research and tell me I was wrong. Um, so I made a bigger range. Um, fats are three to five or zero to 5%. So like just another reason to consume protein, especially on a weight loss, you know, and in, in, in a fat loss journey. Any questions on this? I thought that was really interesting. We're going to put this into practice now. Okay. So here's how to meet your daily goals. Um, I was speaking with, a member yesterday, Olivia, y'all probably know if you train in the mornings, I know Sylvia does. Um, and Olivia was like, Ryan, it's, it's been really hard to get in my protein. Um, I, I end up eating later in the day. I skip, I skip breakfast, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and then is anyone on here post in the chat, come off mic, no judgment. Is anyone on here, um, not hitting their protein intake currently, whether that's your body weight times 0. 0.8 or a hundred grams roughly is like kind of like our benchmarks. Yes. Rosa? <laughs> uh, Rosa, I know you just got back from somewhere. Um, yeah. Okay, so how much are you roughly getting in? Mm, I don't know because I haven't been tracking at all. And um, today, uh, this week was my first week back at um, work. So mm -hmm. my coworkers have been, you know, eating out. So I've been going with them. Okay. So were you ever pretty consistent with your protein? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Rithika, so you're not alone, Rosa. Rithika, kind of low protein intake. Okay, so here's some suggestions and for how to how to help with that. Um, number one is like, and we've all gone over this before, if you haven't been on one of these trainings, but it's good re repetition. Um, restructure your meals. So if you're not currently eating your protein first, or at least second, maybe your veggies first, start there. So Start with eating your protein first. The second thing is always have protein with your meals, right? And then the third thing is if you're if you're eating less than two meals per day, that's fine. However, you're gonna want to probably add in a third meal that can be like just a protein shake or a protein, some type of protein uh, meal, right? Because even if your bar is at 100 grams of protein, heck, even 80. For that if it's at 100 grams and you're only having two meals, that's 50 grams each, depending on your body weight. And if you're a female, especially um, because guys just naturally have more muscle, it's, it's, I'm not like being sexist. It's just that's what it is physiology wise. Like it could be too much to consume at once for the person. You might feel bloated. Right. And like, therefore not want to have it. <laughs> um, so I highly recommend spreading it out. And again, going back to the 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 TEF, thermic effect of food, if you're leaving 
it, you're leaving money on the table in protein, uh, in protein terms. Like, so if you're not having protein in every meal, you're leaving protein money on the table, meaning calories. Um, if you're not having um, three meals a day and at least one of them just a shake, that's fine. Then you're losing an opportunity to burn more calories. Seeing this, because now that we know every time we eat protein, it boosts our metabolism, that's another opportunity to burn calories without having to exercise. Pretty cool, right? Just gotta put stuff in your mouth. Everyone following me so far? Um, so uh, other options, easy peasy. If you eat meats or fishes, for example, or anything really, doesn't need to be a chicken breast like I have here, add more. If you have one chicken breast and it's 30 grams, but you need 40, then just have a chicken breast and a quarter of the another chicken breast. You know, simple math. Um, use utilize protein shakes, especially if you're vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian. Um, utilize protein shakes. Have them between meals or with your meal, if you're vegan or vegetarian, especially because those typically are more um, carb dense. Spread it out. We just went over that. And like here, okay, here's a good hack that I haven't really gone over. Like research protein carbs <laughs> or protein fats, meaning. If you're gonna have bread, switch to Dave's bread from regular bread. Dave's bread has like five grams per slice versus like zero or one with regular bread. If you have um, a meal of 25 gram, but you need three grams of protein and it's a hamburger, that extra piece of bread got you to 30 grams and you still had carbs. See, see my thinking, the thought process, right? But nowadays, like everything is added protein. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm not saying it's the healthiest ever, but like there are options like Dave's bread is great. It's like grains. Um, so there are like a lot of good options out there to kind of do that. And the cool thing is a lot of these options have less calories too. Any um, one want to come off mic really quick and uh, give some suggestions on what's working for them. Or post in the chat. I do like a mixture for my protein. At first, I was just trying to stick to protein shakes, um, but then I incorporated cottage cheese. I know a lot of people probably don't like cottage cheese. <laughs> cottage cheese, and it's a really good snack, like especially in between those meals and after you've probably had dinner and you got like a little hunger or a little craving. Um, so cottage cheese and Greek yogurt with like whole grain. Um, what is that? Granola and nuts and raisins in it. I just kind of mix it up and add a yeah. little honey because you know that Greek yogurt can be very, very tart. <laughs> right. Add a little honey. Um, and that's been working for me. Um, okay. So, yeah. And then just like Ryan said, I, I literally have eliminated if I eat my meats and I'm good, I put my plate away. I put the rest of it up. Yes. Um, only thing, only part about it, my downfall is my water intake. Now I really, I'm, I don't be as thirsty. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, and then it, it like hit me and I'll just jug a, a lot of water at one time. But mm -hmm. yeah, so cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, um, the whole grain granola is really good with it. Um, and then your, your fruits, I have my fruits in it. So heck yeah. Yeah, it's been working for me so far. Great, great suggestions too, Amber. Like, um, and that's another thing too. It's like, if something doesn't taste good, like let's say a lot of people struggle with protein uh, powders because they can taste chalky. I get it. However, it, there, and there are better options out there. And if you can't find it or you already bought it, for example, add in frozen uh, fruit that will overpower that taste. Mm -hmm. like, like Amber's doing with the Greek yogurt and the tartness, right? Yeah. Yep. So great, great. Just small little tweak that you could do with uh, if you are struggling with the taste of, uh, of of foods. Great, great, great suggestion. <clears throat> um, we've all we've beaten this to the pulp as well. How to read a food label. However, I'll go over it really quick because this is uh recorded. I want to put this in the training for everyone. Um, I'm just gonna zip through this. But like when you and um, who who's vegan or vegetarian on here? If anyone. <clears throat> Anyone vegan? Vegetarian? Oh yeah, Shanaz. Yep. So like in Shanaz's example, um, when it is, it, it just it flat out is because she, she's more limited, right, in her options for protein. Um, with someone that is vegan or vegetarian, we have to be more careful with the ratio 
of uh of like the carbs and the calories with the protein because like a lot of like nuts seeds legumes right are uh, suggested for, for that to get protein in um so when you're reading food labels for example and trying to figure out okay how can i find um the highest protein with the lowest calories right um or maybe the lowest carbs too here's how to just start you just look at the food label and you're like all right how many um, grams of protein are in this? 12 grams. All right. How many calories are in this? 270. Everyone see that on the food label? Uh -huh. Okay. So I got to get, I have grams of protein, but I have calories. So I have to convert this to, I have to convert the protein to calories. One gram of protein is four calories. So I go 12 grams total, right? Of protein in this bar times four calories is 48. And then I go, okay, 48 calories divided by the total calories in the food, 270, is 17%. Um, so 17% of this bar is protein, even though this was supposed to be a protein bar. Um, I wish I had the picture to show you. Is that a good option if, if you're going to choose that as a protein snack or a protein option? Yes or no? No. Exactly. Why? It's less than 50% protein. Yep, 100%. So with that said, um, I put the bar at 50% or higher before, and I really want it 75% or higher. However, uh -huh. if we're looking at, you know, someone's like total daily calorie intake, and we look at the percentages of carbs, fat, and protein, you can get away with like 30 to 40% of your diet protein. Um, so I, I lowered the bar to 40%. However, that's for your total protein calories for the day, if you're tracking, which most of us aren't. Um, now, step four, don't pay attention to that. Put the bar to like 50 to 75% if you're choosing it to be specifically a protein snack. Because if you're telling your mind this is a protein snack and it's less than 50%, it's not a protein snack, right? I hope that's not confusing. Any questions on that? I'm not going to beat that up too much. That's really good for a vegan and vegetarian. What, what yep. protein bars would be 50% or more protein? Because like the ones that I, I thought, like. were, thought were pretty good, like 20 grams of protein for 190 calories with only yeah. six grams of fat. Yeah, so 80 divided by 190 is 42%. So it's decent. Um, it's decent. But like most bars are not going to be a good choice for protein, unfortunately. Nah. Unfortunately. But Alyssa, if you're in a pinch, it all depends on where you're at too. If you're in a pinch, you're at a gas station, you're traveling, that's that's better than a lot of options. I just, I wouldn't. I, I, I use them as a breakfast replacement because I don't eat breakfast. So at least okay. I eat something. Yep. Yes. Now that, exactly. And like Shanaz, for example, too. Like, like. If if that's better than nothing, start there. And then I would research, all right, what could I do that's better than that next week, next month? Right? And, and I also try and do it like before and after any workouts, mainly so I can get some protein in it and around the workout because I'm usually not hungry after a workout for a while. Like an hour and a half, two hours before I get hungry. Yeah, that yeah, our, our adrenaline spiked. Uh, all the hormones are up, so that, that makes sense. You're probably going ham in these workouts too. I, I could feel it. Um, all right, so run a little bit over. Um, where to start? So in the research for women who do specifically resistance training, okay? This is these numbers are for women only who do resistance training. Let me repeat that. I'm not talking about the general population that don't strength train. <laughs> um, Micah, your number is going to be 1.0 times your body weight for protein, which is a lot. So you don't need to start there. Um, I'm going to tell you guys where to start. Women, your, or ladies, your, uh, your body weight times 0.8 is like the promised land. However, it's a lot of protein. We've seen that. We've tried it with a lot of y'all. It's really hard to do that. Start at where you're comfortable. We recommend a hundred grams of protein. If that number is too high, if that number is like 120, 150, 200, right? So you can put the bar to a hundred grams. Heck, even 80 if you're only getting at 40, right? So start there, um, decide how many meals you're going to eat per day, because if you have 100 grams of protein, you're going to want to have at least three meals, so you have 30, 30, 30, and to take benefit 
of that boosting metabolism, right? Otherwise, you're leaving calories on the table. Uh, prepare in advance. Go shopping. Do your research. Uh, get protein snacks for when you are in a pinch. So that, Alyssa, that bar is better than nothing if you are in a pinch. Um, protein powders are great. Pre-made shakes are great, et cetera. Kind of already went over this, but if you're struggling with protein as a vegan or vegetarian, um, shakes and powders are going to be helpful. And you could have one shake a day that's 40 grams, and that's half your protein intake almost. Um, find non-dairy yogurts. There's a ton of them. Just research them on Google. Ask me. Uh, choose high-protein legumes, nuts, and seeds. Because there's nuts, there's nuts out there. But like, is a peanut better than an almond? Probably not. An almond's better than a peanut from the ratio of protein. So make sure you're choosing these types of foods wisely, right? Um, be careful and do the math on that. And uh, snack smart. Did I put that in there? It sounds like a marketing term. Um, okay. Any questions on any of that? You just said non non dairy yogurt. Why is that? For for vegan or vegetarian? Because oh, vegan or vegetarian. Okay, so it's yeah. not something. Okay. Yeah, okay, I was specifically okay. talking to uh, vegan or vegetarians right there. Yeah, because that's uh, okay. That's Any questions? Great job, Brian. Thank you. <laughs> You're very. I appreciate that, Amber. Any um biggest takeaway? Let's go around the room really, really quick. Um, DJ, I will start with you. What's your biggest takeaway on that that you uh can implement? And then this is going to really help others. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I would say to make sure to um shop smart this weekend so that I can have protein on hand, especially after my workouts. So. Yay. I love that. Rithika? Sorry, Ryan, I uh, Yep. So, what's your um? What is your biggest takeaway from what we just covered? Um, that you're gonna implement for yourself. Uh, I have to. I mean, I'll be taking the protein intake. Like, I have. I did not start taking the protein powders or something like that. Okay. Uh, I have to start that. I'll be starting that. Uh, taking the protein intake, like from bars or the powder itself. Mm -hmm. Heck yeah. Yep. And that'll be good. Do a little research, spend a week or two, trying different mm -hmm. stuff out, ask, ask us, ask the members what's what they feel like tastes best. That like should that. be increasing my metabolism. Yeah, that should be increasing my metabolism to reduce my weight mm -hmm. and the fats. Yes, exactly. And these are all, they're all going to add up, all these little small things. So I, I love that. Um. Selena. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep working on the protein. I am getting it in, but mm -hmm. trying to get the meats to cook at home, that's a little of a struggle. Yeah. Text me offline um, and I can help you out. Uh, we can go a little bit more in depth okay. with that. Micah? Uh, for me, it's probably have to be um, keeping track of my protein properly, but yeah. also um, the eating four to six hours thing because I mean I'm I'm still kind of stuck in the mindset of three meals a day, sometimes only two meals a day, just because that's the way I think. But actually putting that more into breaking those meals up. Yeah, and um, just for the record, for everyone, um, in the research. There isn't like a one or 20 meals a day is better or worse. It, it, it does come down to what works best for you. And if you, if you want, if you do break it up every four to six hours, if that works for your lifestyle, great, because you will maximize like the boosting your metabolism with the protein. But if you have like, if you have type two diabetes, type one, if, you know, this and that, like you got to do um, what works best for you. So Micah, as long as you are, um, getting in the protein target and spreading that spreading that out in three meals too that that's fine and maybe you spread them out four to six hours to maximize your results um but yeah play around with that for sure but start with the most important which is getting in that total intake um Shanaz? for me also tracking it i have been making sure that i'm eating protein every meal uh, but 
I guess I just need to um, go and do some numbers crunching uh, to figure out how much actual protein am I getting. Mm -hmm. um, and I did put uh, the protein powder in um, in my breakfast quinoa that I made. So um, um, I think I'm doing good, but um, I I just need to go and see how much is it that I'm actually getting. It's a great point. Yeah, and if anyone isn't not isn't sure of where you're at, it's always a good little idea. Maybe like once a week or once a month, or or do it until you don't need to, just to take a look at how much you are getting in. And like it does, yes, it is going to be an extra step, but like you're learning. You're like, oh, I didn't know that like there was more carbs and protein in this. Or no wonder why I'm gaining. Like no wonder why I'm doing it at a personal fitness program. And I'm gaining weight. I'm eating too many calories. <laughs> um, so yeah, see where you're at. Use you, you guys can use uh, and I'm Shinez not just talking to you. I'm talking to everyone, including myself. You guys can use like my fitness pal, lose it. Just go on Google, ask Chat GBT, text us, like read the food label, write it down in your notepad, whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong answer. Um, Selena, what about you? Unless I already asked you, I can't remember who I asked. <laughs> yeah, you already asked. Okay, yeah, Sylvia. I'm just thinking of more creative ways to add the protein. Um, I've been sticking to 100 grams of protein, and I do feel a difference in my body. I'm not sure if I'm shedding the weight any faster, mm -hmm. but I do feel better, and I feel like I'm sleeping yeah. sounder. I mean, yeah. there's certain things that I've been doing that have changed the way I feel, uh -huh. but the weight's not dropping off yet. But, like, for example, I know I can have this uh, a peach, but I could maybe cut up the peach and add, like, a scoop of uh, vanilla protein with it or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and just make it more of a um instead of the yogurt because i am trying to stay away from dairy good. yeah <laughs> so, yeah you, you know, said vanilla protein, protein powder and peaches yeah. i'm sorry Does so that sound yeah. good? it does sound good you i was thinking of I I was, oh my goodness I, I, was, uh, I had seen some peaches and some watermelon i was thinking it's really too high sugar i try to stay with berries because i'm yeah. borderline diabetic Right. So, but I'm thinking if I add the protein shake, you know, the powder to the uh -huh. higher fructose um, fruit, maybe I could get away with eating it. I am trying that today, and I'm going to yeah, let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay, you let me know, because I've got two peaches I'm going to try it with today, too. <laughs> Alyssa, if I didn't ask you, forgive me if I did. Who did I not ask? <laughs> Come off, Mike. You're talking too much. You don't have to ask me. I think I told you everything. <laughs> Go ahead and ask. Come off, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. Um, um, understanding that, um, how to read the food labels and just like, the re 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 reiteration of it is like really in becoming ingrained in my mind. Yeah. So that it, you know, I'm able to, you know, decide what to get and what not to get. Yeah. Yes, Rosen. Yeah, repetition is huge. I'm glad. Oh, nice. For me, for me, Ryan, this is Amber. Yep. One minute. Yeah. Amber? Um, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Amber's yeah. Uh, yeah, Amber A. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So my takeaway is like the protein, make sure I'm getting all my protein in. And also like not eating anything before two hours of bed um because sometimes i do get peckish before bed so doing that will help me i feel like to sleep better and also not to gain weight yeah <laughs> yes yep that would be the goal <laughs> for sure <laughs> <laughs> anyone else i gotta i gotta run a little late i'm gonna post this in the um where am i gonna post this I actually have these posted in the APF app. It's called like fat loss secrets on everyone's habits dashboard. Message me offline um, if you don't know where to find that. Um, and I could just send you the recording with the link, but I am gonna post those and we're gonna really organize it and stuff like that. Um, outside of that, I know we didn't do a really bit like a check-in with Rosa, Mike and stuff like that. However, it seems like y'all need to start here and get this consistent anyways. So I think that was a check-in in and of itself. Can we agree on that? Text me offline though if it text me offline though if you do want to set up like a call or a thing next week. Happy to do that for sure. Um, have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, enjoy your shrimp effect of food, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk soon. Thank you, Ryan. See you guys. Thank Thanks, you. Ryan. Bye, guys.